Hi everybody, this is God's Girl G. Thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you returning to this channel to watch this video, and you are not already subscribed, I'm going to encourage you to click the subscribe button below. That way you won't miss any of the videos that I upload. And if during the course of this video, you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up, comment below, or better yet, share this video with someone who you feel could benefit from its information. With that stated, let's get into today's discussion. Today's video topic was really inspired from one of my more recent videos. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video called A Thorn in the Flesh, and basically, what is it, how to deal with the thorn in the flesh, and one of the things that I revealed in that video is that sometimes a thorn in the flesh can be a person. After uploading that video and doing research on thorn in the flesh and all of that, it led me to some additional thoughts that I'd like to share with you today. The first thought that I had is, why do our enemies stick around? Meaning, if they don't like us, why are they always in our vicinity? Now, sometimes it is because they have no other choice. It could be because it's someone that you work with and you have to be around them or they have to be around you, right? But there are other times in a more casual, personal nature where your enemies kind of gravitate toward you even though they don't like you, okay? Then there was another thought that came to my head is that we've heard a saying that keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And so in today's video, I really want to unravel that a little bit and understand what really is the purpose of and for our enemies and what we can do to deal with it. When I started thinking about the purpose of our enemies and the purpose of our frenemies, as some of us may call them, the reason why it is important to keep them around and keep them close is that our frenemies will be honest with us about our shortcomings, whereas our friends try to spare our feelings. Enemies also present times for adversity, which naturally pushes us out of our comfort zone and provides an opportunity for personal growth. So keeping your enemies close requires a balancing act of prayer and faith. But once mastered, it will become second nature and you will all the more benefit from what they do, which is help push us towards our destiny. So let's talk about ways that we can deal with our enemies or frenemies since they're gonna be so close to us and in our vicinity. The first one is that we are to love our enemies. Now, Matthew 5 and 44 is actually a scripture that if you were to run a poll, people would say that would be the scripture they would most likely want out of the Bible. Because, I mean, think about it. Love your enemies. That makes no sense to our human finite minds. Matthew 5 and 44 says this. I say to you, love your enemies. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? I mean, didn't Jesus really tell us to love our enemies? Yes, he did. But we must remember that when he speaks of the word love, and when we talk about the word love, love is not a feeling. It's a decision. Now, love comes with those feelings wrapped up in it, but it is a decision to love. Sometimes we get too wrapped up in our feelings, especially when dealing with our enemies. But what I have learned is that nothing in the spiritual realm is ever led by human feelings. We make a decision to receive Jesus. We make a decision to be kind to our friends and we can make a decision to love our enemies. The good news is God never gives us a command that doesn't come with the offer of supernatural assistance. When you have a willing heart, he will give you the help to do what you feel is the impossible and love even your worst enemies. Next, we are to pray for our enemies. Matthew 5 and 44 continues by saying, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you 
When you spend time in intimate prayer on behalf of pressing personal needs for friends, family, our nation, and the spreading of the gospel, the idea of bringing an enemy into our prayer mix might seem a bit challenging. But even so, Jesus commanded us to do so for our own benefit. When we pray for those who have wronged us, it gives us the opportunity to release hurt, anger, and unforgiveness in our heart, and in turn receive God's peace. As you pray for your enemies, you will find that your heart will begin to soften toward them more and more. And you'll keep yourself in a spiritual posture of love. And that is a position of victory. Next, we should do good to our enemies. Matthew 5 and 44 says, do good to those that hate you. Now, when you think of your enemies, you're likely not thinking about wanting to give them a favorite trinket gift or do something good for them. Let's just be honest. But we do need to do good to them and for them. That's what Jesus was saying in this verse. When you are treated poorly, harassed, mistreated, talked about, you need to respond in a way that sets us apart as being Christians. Now, I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of courage, humility, and love to do good to those who mistreat you. It's not easy. But when you're filled with the love of God, you can do it. Anyone can lash out and fight back against enemies. But Jesus has instructed us to do good instead. When we pray for our enemies, this is how we as believers walk in that God kind of love. It's what Jesus taught us to do and his ways always bring blessings. We are to forgive our enemies. Matthew 6 and 14 says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. When you suffer a deep wound or continually recall hurtful interactions and situations, forgiveness can seem too big a challenge to even tackle. But God has commanded that we forgive. The devil has convinced a lot of believers that forgiving someone is somehow letting the offender go without consequence but nothing can actually be further from the truth. Forgiveness isn't something that happens between you and the offender. It is an actual transaction between you and God. It's quiet, it's a personal transaction of the heart, and it gives God room to take care of justice on your behalf. And this brings me to another point that I wanna make about dealing with our enemies. Let God avenge you. Romans 12 and 19 says this. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. If you are a lover of justice, you likely have problems accepting the feeling that someone is getting away with something. However, God never told us that we were the judge and jury. Now, we may not see justice take place with our own eyes, but we can rest assured that God will deal with it. Psalms 23 and 5 says that he will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. So either way, trust God to take care of it. Put your focus on obeying his word regarding your enemies. You will find your desire for justice will melt away in the loving arms of our father, who is also our defender. Friends, you will never cease to make enemies, no matter how old you get. But if you learn how to deal with them, to forgive them, rather than let them chip away at you, you'll be ahead of the game. Having enemies close certainly keeps us on our toes. And despite the fact that each enemy has his or her own agenda in our life, they do serve a purpose. Our enemies pushes us into our destiny. God will take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for our good. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Bye.